Yeah. Father, I thank you for coming for me. I was nothing but a rebel. (laughs) Too many times I found myself not where I was supposed to be. Father, I thank you that hell couldn't stop you. Mountains couldn't stop you. Lies couldn't stop you. From chasing us down. Lord, I pray right now, if there's somebody in here that's running from you, I pray that they wouldn't be scared that you're coming for them. I pray they would know that love, 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 the greatest love of all is standing right there beside them. Lord, that we would give up this way of doing things ourselves and what seems right. That we would give up these ways of trying to look a certain way. God, and we would just surrender. We would wave the white flag and realize we cannot do this thing. Lord, you didn't create us to carry this weight that we carry. Trying to do this and that. Lord, no. You're bigger, you're better, you're stronger, you're greater than anything we face, including ourself. So, Lord, I thank you for this time that we can come together and we can worship you. So, Lord, now as we move into your word, your seed, Lord, give us the ears to hear what you have all of us here for today. No matter what season we're in. And it's in the highest name. The greatest name. The King of Kings. The Lord of Lords. And who we pray. And this church said. And it wasn't quiet when they said. Amen. That's what I'm talking about. Good morning y'all. Can y'all hear me? Is my mic on? Okay. I'm I'm getting old. I can't hear. Huh? Huh? <laughs> All right. Man, ain't God good. Mm-hmm. Chasing a rebel down. What you mean? If you have, yeah. If you, have, if you have your Bible, let's go to Luke chapter 6. Luke chapter 6. You glad you're at church? You glad you came? Now it's time to get in here and learn Learn, because we're going to face some stuff this week, this year, this month, maybe today, that we're going to need. We're going to need some word. The best thing to do when you face something is, is put some word on it, right? Put some word on it. So let's recap, let's revisit, and let's go deeper into some stuff. I'm going to uh, finish up a series I've been on. We're calling it Strong House Equals a Strong City. And if you hadn't been here, it's going to make sense here in just a minute. But if you want a strong city, you want a strong nation, it's going to start at the house. you got to have a strong house to get to a strong city. Amen. Luke 6, starting in verse 46, the word says, Why do you call me Lord? Why do you say, Lord, Lord? Anybody said, Lord, Lord, lately? But you don't do the things that I say. How can you call Jesus Lord if we don't listen to what he says and do what he says? Right? Why you call somebody a mama or a daddy if you ain't going to listen to them? (laughs) Hello. I figured some parents would have said amen on that. Verse 47. Whoever comes to me and hears my sayings, my word, and does them, I'm going to show him, show you who he's like. He's like a man that is building a house 
He dug deep. He laid the foundation on a rock. When the flood arose, the streams beat, big word, vehemently. I mean, you can put in the thing there. I mean, it, it, it tried to tear it up, right? It tries to tear your house down. It's the big bad wolf, and I huff, and I puff, and I'm trying to blow your house down. It's the, it's the enemy. It said that wolf, that flood, that wind could not, what, shake it. Why? Because it was founded on the rock. Come on, somebody. Okay, listen to what he said. He said, if you're somebody that is, is positioning yourself to hear the Word of God, you put yourself there that I'm going to hear the Word of God, whether it's in, your Bible, in a Bible study at the church house, you got it coming out your phone when you're riding down the road, maybe you're listening to worship music, you do realize in that worship music is the Word of God. Where do you think the songs come from, Right? You say, well, I, I didn't know that was in the scripture that he chases rebels down. It's all in there. Yeah. may not be worded exactly like that, but he's coming for you, <laughs> right? So, so whenever you hear the word, how silly is it to, 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 to just walk away from there and say, oh, that was a good word. Now, what was I doing? You know what I'm saying? It'd be just like you, you're toe up from the floor up, and you go to the doctor, and the doctor said, let me tell you how to not be toe up. And you're sitting there listening to him. He's like, that's good. That's good. Well, you can do A, B, and C. You'll be good by next Wednesday. All right. And you leave there and say, oh, that was good. But you didn't do anything about it. And then what do you do? You proceed toe up, right? It's the same thing. Listen, some of our lives are toe up. And some of us are falling. Some of our houses are blowing down. It's simply this. It ain't, it ain't that we've not been under the word. It's not that we hadn't read the word. It doesn't, it's not that we don't know what Jesus says. We hadn't done the part where we do it yet. Okay? And what does it say? It says if we do it, we're like a man who, ha who lives in a strong house. Come on, somebody. Okay, now watch this, verse 49. But if you hear the, hear the word, hear the word. See, a lot of people in churches this morning all across the world, and they've been in the church, and they're going to hear the word. They're going to be like this man right here, that he built his house on the earth without a foundation. Mm. What does that mean? He did appear and beam, didn't he? <laughs> Hopefully he has some strong beams. <laughs> okay, what happened? He did not have a foundation. And the stream come... Beat again, it was the same thing, trying to tear his house down. And what happened? Immediately, that house fell. And it was in, watch this, it was a great fall, and it stood in great ruin. I picture like a, a tornado goes through, and it's so sad. You see the people out there picking through their stuff, trying to find something from, from what they had that they could salvage. And it's the, it's the saddest thing. I want you to think about a house that's been through divorce or a house that's been through some bad decisions, and now you got the little kids, and they're going from house to house, or maybe they don't even know where to go anymore. Maybe Mama and Papa have to step in. It's just, it's, just, it's just sad to see kids sifting through the rubble of a mom and dad who made bad decisions. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Okay, so here's the key, here's the key to what we just read. If you don't want your house, if you don't want your life, if you don't want your marriage or your family or your community to fall, what should we do? We should build it on Jesus and his word. Is that what you got out of that? Okay, that was a few of them. All right, let's go to Psalm 127. I hope we all got that out of that. Okay, Psalm 127. We're still recapping, revisiting. I had to tear down all my stuff up, was up, up, up here. We had a funeral on Thursday. And uh, for those of you that wasn't here, we had a big couch sitting right here. We had a big table right here. We had a, we had a bed right here, right? It had the Cowboys on it, but we should have had the 49ers on it. <laughs> now, anyway, next year the Cowboys will be back. Amen. Okay. <laughs> So, so, so here's what it represented. The, the bed represented the marriage, right? The, the table represented the family. And the couch represented the community. 
See, the couch is where we come and we sit and we share our heart and we get to know one another, right? The table, the table is where we sit with our family and our kids, and, and that's where we talk to one another. That's where we equip one another. That's where we pour in and we love on one another, right? And if you're single, the bed is for you and Jesus only. Quit, quit skipping the couch and the table and bringing folk to the bed. It's you and Jesus, right, for single folk. Amen? Okay. But the bed is for the marriage. Amen. Okay, Psalm 127, verse 1. Unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who builds it. Unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman stays awake, but it's in vain. What does that mean? It means the Lord is going to reach, he's going to keep, he's going to shape a city. How? By the house that he builds. I hope you get that. This is the message of the whole thing that we've been talking about for three weeks. If you got a strong house, a do-to-book house, do-to-Bible house, I'm standing on the word. I'm not just hearing it. I'm doing it. Jesus is my foundation. And them kids leave your house, guess what? They're going to go make a strong community, a strong city. Yes, they will. Do you see it? That's good stuff. Notice what it says, though. If we labor in vain, who build it? Listen, if the Lord is not the Lord of your house, if you cannot say with 100% uh, uh, confidence that you, you can quote that verse, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. And we stand on that, right? If that's not us, if that's not us, What's going to happen, anything we work hard for, any blood, sweat, tears, all that time that we try to build a house, a home, a family, will be in vain if the Lord is not the Lord of our house. I want you to think about that. Have you ever been putting something together without the instructions? Okay, you get it together and it's looking good, but then you say, well, this ain't matching up. wonder why. And then you finally look at the instructions and you say, ah, I left that out. I was supposed to do that at the very beginning. And what did you have to do? Tear the whole thing down that you just spent the last hour and a half, two hours putting together because you got to put that one piece in there to make it all work. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Okay, that's the thing. If anything we do to try to build our house and to teach our kids, if the Lord is not the Lord of our house, it's, the Word says it's all in vain. Do you agree with that? Don't leave Jesus out. Don't leave Jesus out. It's like this, man. <laughs> one of my buddies pulled a prank one time, and, he, and, he, and he, put a, he took all the Pringles out of the Pringles can and put in a dirty sock. He sure did. And he put about that many more Pringles on the top of it. And, and, and my partner loved Pringles, man. Them barbecue, them spicy barbecues or whatever. Man, he come and sit down, and these boys tearing them up. <sighs> he kept saying, somebody's feet stink. <laughs> <laughs> somebody's feet stink. <laughs> <laughs> right? Dirty sock. Right in the mouth. Isn't that sad? I'd never eat another Pringle again. What is, that, what is that picture of, though? Okay, all right, I need to have Jesus as my Lord. I see that now. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to, but, but I'm not going to go in and tear down. I'm just going to build on top of, put Jesus on top of what I, I, I've already built. That does not work. See, his blueprint works. Ours doesn't. His, our blueprint's a dirty sock. Uh-uh. Man, anytime you eat Pringles now, shake it. You, look, shake a full one, you'll know how it feels, okay? And then shake another one. Don't break them, though. Shake another You'll know if somebody's going to mess with your Pringles. I saw, I saw an old boy put some toothpaste in the Oreos the other day. Uh-huh. Got his wife. Good. Could you imagine swallowing some ooh, toothpaste? Anyway, verse 2. It is in vain to rise up early. To set up late, to eat the bread of sorrows, for so is God. He gives his children, his beloved sheep, sleep. Think about it. Are you bad about getting up early? But then you really did. You went to bed so late, you only got you a few hours. Why? You stirred up. Something's got you stirred up. 
It says, it says that we've been eating the bread of sorrows. In other words, there's no peace in our life. It, it, God can't give you any good sleep because we won't listen to him. And he says it's in vain. He said all of that that's keeping you up at night is in vain. We got to trust him. Church, listen to me. Without Jesus, there's an anxiety, a major anxiety that will keep you stirred up to the point where you don't sleep much and you're consistent, more and more consistent with your worry. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? See, that's when we try to do it on our own. You, you, listen, you'll be disconnected. And it says that, 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 that we eat the bread of sorrows. Let that, let that soak in. That means our food, our food is, 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 is what, we're, what we're sorry for. Our food is, 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 is what we know we shouldn't be doing. I mean, that's not a good diet, right? You've heard that saying that we, we, we are what we eat. If your diet is the bread of sorrows, you are what you eat. In other words, we're sorry because all we feed on is sorry. And then everybody in our house, they'll be affected in some way. Does that make sense? Because we, when we're sorry, <laughs> it's because what we're eating on is sorry. Look at verse 3. I love this. Behold... Our children, children are a what? A heritage from the Lord. It says it's the fruit of the womb is a reward. Now, let, let, think about that. Your, your, our children are, are a heritage. From where? From the Lord. Wait, I thought you said it was a mistake. No, 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 no. That wasn't a mistake. No. You got to remember... <laughs> Before we were in our mother's womb, he knew us. Okay, that means before we were even anything, God had a dream of us in the earth realm. That means when we're born, he says we're fearfully, wonderfully made. That means what? We're a dream come true. Okay? So the children are a heritage from the Lord. In, that, that word heritage means an inheritance from the Lord. Isn't that, isn't that, isn't that beautiful? You, okay, you think about this. If you're God's child today, you, 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 you're, you're from the Lord. Okay? You, you're, you're in a way, you're a gift from God. You're a dream come true. What about your children? Your children are a dream come true. Your children are an inheritance from the Lord. But I want you to think about that just for a minute. What are they? I mean, you've got this, this beautiful inheritance from the Lord. What are you pouring into that child? Because you think about it. There's a physical inheritance that, well, I'm going to pass down my shotgun to my boy. And I'm gonna, you're going to get mama's dress and her grapefruit spoon. That would be good for you. <laughs> and you know what? We cherish those things. Like, this was daddy's. This was daddy's. I mean, look, man, I got my daddy's Jordans, you know, or whatever. And it's like, no, you know, da, 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 whatever. All oh, that's cool, right? I got my grandma's grapefruit spoon. That's why I said that. It's, it's, like, a, it's like a metal spork, okay? But it, but it doesn't have the big teeth. It's just got little bitty teeth. And she used to do the, do the grapefruit and feed me with it. Man, I just love that. I miss that, right? I really miss that. And uh, anyway, but I want you to think about it. Yeah, all that's good, and, and yeah, that, that's good. You need your fishing poles and everything, too. But listen, what would be better to pass down? How about something that won't spoil, something that won't ruin, something that won't fade away? See, that's eternal stuff right there. That's this word. That's Jesus. Amen. Verse 4, I love this. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior, so are the children of one's youth. And now, unless them arrows try to put you in the nursing home, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> ah. Listen, you pull back an arrow, you shoot that thing. What is that? That's an opportunity. Every time you pull an arrow back and you send that, that's an opportunity. You do realize your children are opportunities to make an impact for God's glory. When you see your children, look at them as opportunities. Opportunities to make a great nation. 
Opportunities to make a great community. Listen, opportunities to build another strong house. Right? Look at verse 5. Happy is the man who has a quiver full of them. Oh, go ahead. They shall not be ashamed. I love this. But shall speak with their enemies in the gate. Now, what you think about it, back in the day, in biblical days, they had, they, they had strong walls in a city. But the gate is where everybody come in and out. Well, at the gate, that's where all the business was done. That's where all the decisions were made. The gate would be almost like the courthouse, right? So when it says that our children will speak to the enemies at the gate, in other words, here's the ideal thing. We will have our children, because of the table... All right, understanding the couch, understanding the table, understanding the bed. But at the table, they were equipped now to leave the home and become someone who could stand in that gate and be a leader. Church, this is, this is what's the problem right now, okay? We, the, we need children that can be equipped to make a difference, Children that can make sound judgment. Children that can be a leader. Children that can be a game changer. Children that can do things the right way for a change. Amen? And notice this. It says they're equipped They're equipped to even talk to the enemies. In church, I would say that's both physical and spiritual. Is your child, will your child be ready when they leave the house? Are they going to be ready for spiritual warfare? Because you do realize if you equip the child in the name of Jesus who has a solid foundation of Jesus, who's a do-the-word child, and when they leave your house as a young adult, guess what? Who else is coming for them? The enemy. The enemy. So is your child, does, does your child know that the enemy is real? And that the enemy can't stand them because they're a child of God. Ephesians 4, verse 27 says this, a very important scripture. It says, don't give a foothold, a place to the devil. Okay? Don't give a place to the devil. Don't let him have a seat at your table. Right? Don't let him have a place to put his foot. Does our children know this? Listen, when they leave the house, they got to know what a foothold is. They got to know what to look for. They got to know when that sneakity, sneakity snake is trying to get in there and get at them. They got to know not to put themselves in certain positions where Miss Thang can get, get them off in another area. of the, of the. You know what I'm saying? You listen, they could be in here on the couch with Miss Thang, and they don't realize that Miss Thang is, it could possibly be uh, enemy of the foothold, foothold from the enemy. And you, they, all of a sudden, you done passed up the couch, and you find yourself in the bed. And quit acting like you don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, wait, I, Mr. Thing, because Mr. Thing, they're more of the player, right? These days and times, I hear the ladies are more of the players. But Miss Thing and Mr. Thing, don't let Mr. Thing and Miss Thing singles get you in that thing. Is that making any sense to anybody? What I'm saying is they got to know what a foothold is, like, Man, they could destroy me. They could, just, they, they could take me down. You know what I'm saying? Oh, or when they got their phone out and they see something and they, and, they, and they have that check in their spirit. They need to know what a check in their They need to know what conviction is. Church, we, can, we, can, we can't send our kids out as young adults if they don't know what conviction is. I'm telling you right now. Here's the thing. Our children are not a burden. They are the greatest asset ever. Do you agree with that? Are we investing in them? In Genesis 18, you don't have to turn there. There's a reason why. You ever thought about why did God call Abraham from everybody else to be the father of his nation? And it's real simple. I think it's around verse 17 or something like that. He says, because Abraham will teach the children to walk in my way. That's why he chose him. That's why. Let me tell you something. You show me a mama and daddy that's invested in their child's children, I'm going to show you a, a, a mama and daddy that's blessed. You, sh you show me a ministry that is dedicated to our children, I'm going to show you a blessed ministry. Why? Because God is generational. Do y'all agree with this? 
He's a generational God. We have to pass this foundation on. Listen, what we're talking about today is a generational blessing. Let me show you. Go look at Psalm 128. You in 127? Just look right there on the page. Let me show you this one more time, then we're going to move something new. Blessed is one, verse 1, who fears the Lord. Not that they're scared of him. It's an honor. It's a respect, right? Who, who what? Who walks in his ways. Church, listen to me. This is talking about an individual who, who trusts in the Lord, who honors the Lord, and who walks in his ways of his word. Okay? Y'all with me? All right. Verse 2 says, when, when, when you eat the labor of your hands, you're going to be happy, and it shall be well with you. That's an individual serving the Lord. He's working hard. He's blessed. Okay. What happens next? Your wife. Uh-oh. This individual got a, got a wife. What you say? His wife will be like a what? Fruitful vine. She's going to be blessed now. See the progression? See the domino effect? Your wife shall be like a fruitful vine in the heart of your house. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't it nice to know that you got a, 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 a believing wife that is the heart, the heartbeat of your home? Oh, church, that's such a blessing. That's such a blessing. She says, it says she's going to be like a fruitful vine. What does that mean? I'll say this one more time. It means, okay, you take a vine for a minute. When a vine starts growing up beside your house, it, 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 it's going to cling to your house to climb. But first of all, that vine has to cling to be able to climb. Can your wife hold on to you? Have you made it to where she can hold on? Are you worth holding on to? Or are you a knucklehead? If Jesus is your Lord, I would say, ladies, that's a good start right there. But then, can she climb on you? Don't use that as, as, as that, what, what you're thinking now. I mean, that, that can happen too, but that's, that's over there and that later. We're talking about, can, can she climb? Can, in other words, will she, will, she, will she be all that God has called her to be because you are her man? Because you, Mr. Man, pray for her. You encourage her. I mean, she's a, she's a, she's a ten cow wife. Oh, I'm going to have to tell that story now. <laughs> Dang, Austin, I hope I can remember this. So, so okay, okay, here's the story. Back in the day, uh, they, they traded cows for things, right? And, and if they trade one or two cows, that's a pretty good deal for something, right? Well, this one old boy, he's like, man, he saw this girl. He's like, man, she, she, I, just, she, I want her as my wife. So she goes to the dad and gives 10 cows. G gives, gives 10 cows. Like, like, she's worth 10 cows. I'm going to give 10 cows for her. Well, listen, them 10 cows just made that man the richest man on the island. 10 cows. That price paid for her was like astronomical. That man's rich. So he took his wife. And they go on, probably the other side of the island or on. I may be messing up the story. But I do know if, if a year or two later, that daddy goes over to the house. And he says, man, why do you pay so much for my daughter? Why do you pay so much for her? He said, I just thought that's what she was worth. And by the way, you want to see your daughter? And this, out come this beautiful woman. See, the one he paid for, she was towed up. She was towed up. She, was, she didn't look like she was worth 10 cows. But now she's beautiful as can be. Like she's flourishing. she got a personality. She loves Jesus. And her daddy's going, wow. He said, what'd you do? He said, the moment she found out what she was worth, she flourished. Is that okay? Okay. He told me that story a few weeks ago. And I'm like, I probably butchered it, but we got the gist of it. Now, I had to say that if I'm going to say you a 10 cow wife. So... <laughs> Being a 10-count wife means you a, you, a, you a valuable girl. So is your man telling you and let you know you are valuable, that you are loved, that the Lord has got you, and I'm with you no matter what? So then you know what happens after that? On a vine that clings and climbs, now what? It's going to cluster. It's going to bear fruit. And man, everybody gets to enjoy the fruit of the vine. 
because everybody sees her smile. She's a blessing to them. She's praying for folks. Boy, she is amazing. She can cook. Oh, come on, somebody. She got the turnip greens going with the hot water cornbread and some fried chicken. Let's go. Y'all crazy. Okay, that's the wife, right? Okay, so we got a dude walking in the ways of the Lord. He finds a wife that's walking in the ways of the Lord. He pours into her, and she's a blessing. Okay, what else? Look at verse 5, or verse 3. It says, the children are like olive plants around the table. Where? What if they didn't have a table? What if they never sat around the table? We got to get the kids at the table. I don't care if you don't have a table. Get some sawhorses and some plywood. You can make a table. I'm telling you, me, me, we bad about getting a bag from Chick-fil-A and they eating in the back seat. We, oh, that's going to stop. We're going to sit at the table when we can. I talked to uh, Cody this, this, this week, and I said, hey, at least one night a week, the whole family is going to be at the table because I'm going to pour into my children, and we're going to love on one another. We're, gonna, we're just going to do it. That's what we're going to do. There's no way I can preach this and not do it. I want to see them little olive plants just whoop, 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 whoop. Right? You like that? Okay, watch. See, we, we still ain't there. Okay. Blessed is a man. See, the children are blessed, right? Blessed is a man shall be blessed who fears the Lord. The Lord bless you out of Zion. Watch this. And may you see the good of Jerusalem all the days of your life. Okay, what is Jerusalem? Jerusalem is a city. Okay, now we've got a blessed man who gets a blessed wife, blessed marriage, has some blessed children. Now the children are leaving the house, and the city's blessed. Mm. Ain't done. Yes, you may see your children's children. Peace be upon Israel. What is Israel? That's a nation. Blessed individual, blessed marriage, blessed children, Children leave, bless community, bless city, bless nation. You want to change the world? It starts at the table. It starts in this word. The individual in this word, getting, an, getting another individual female, and y'all loving one another, showing what love is, right? And, and, and that's how you change the nation with the bless of the children. Amen? Amen. Now, that what I just showed you is a generational blessing. But what do you hear? What is the word you hear more than generational blessing? Generational what? Exactly. Lamentations. Go to your right. You'll see Jeremiah. And there's the book of Lamentations right next to to Jeremiah. Y'all still got time? Okay. I'm telling you, man, this word, this word, we need to hear more than anything. And if you're in here today and you say, well, Brother Scotty, all my kids is gone. My grand, you know, I got grand. Listen, I don't care. Kids are kids. Young folks is young folks. Pour into them. If, if, you ain't, if you don't have any way of being around kids or whatever, get that out of your pocket and start putting towards something, somebody that's blessing some kids with the Lord. Help in that way. Amen? Amen. Boy, y'all quiet. Y'all, don't, y'all believe that? Lamentation. Y'all found it that quick? Anybody go to the uh, con- table of content? Or does anybody just forget and just look at the screen? Listen, that word, man, the more you flip, you think about when you looked at that catalog, you know where all the baits are. Ladies, you know when you look through the Sears and Roebuck, you know where the shoes are. They don't even have that stuff anymore. <laughs> You just, you just go online like Amazon, yes, says I, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> that's, see, Amazon, when you're flipping, that's like a catalog. Anyway, I'm, 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 I, think I'm, I, think I, I think I'm getting too old. <laughs> All right, here we go. <laughs> I, it's bad when I can't relate to anybody anymore. They're going to put me out in the pasture. Okay. <laughs> Our fa- don't you do- somebody needs to hear this. Our fathers sinned and are no more, but we bear their iniquities. Now, this, this could mean 
that your great grandpa, your grandpa, your, your daddy, whoever sinned, passed something down, maybe from great to grand, now to daddy, now to you. And it's just been this trickle down effect. Whatever this bad habit is, whatever this bad tradition is, I almost fell off the stage, and what, or, or this lie that your family's been believing, or this just, just negative attitude, whatever your family's been believing, and it's just been trickling down. That's the way we do things. We always do things that way. Okay? Listen, and, I'm, and the Bible's talking about it's sin. There's some addiction that's been passed down from as long as you can see. Huh? 100 years. Been passed down, and here it is at you in your house. Okay? Now we bear, that word iniquity means lifestyle. We are bearing either the fruit of that or we're struggling with it ourselves. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying to you? Okay? So, so, so. Go back to the man that built his house, and his house fell. Okay? So they're out there. You got your kids out in the yard sifting through the rubble. Mom and daddy's gone. Now the kids are just sifting through the rubble. That's what it looks like when you have a child sifting through the rubble of a generational curse. Is this making sense? That's why it says it's a great fall. If you don't build your house on the Lord Jesus Christ, your house is going to fall. Addiction can make your house fall. The enemy can make your house fall. Okay? So that old mindset, I, I just wonder if anybody struggles with this right now. That's, you just seen it, maybe your uncle. Yeah, I knew you were going to be just like your uncle. You know? And here you are. Yeah, I see it. I see it. If that's you, it's a lie. That don't have to be you. Okay? If the Lord builds the house. Huh? Huh? Okay? Okay? He's the one that can set you free. Okay? Is that make, are you good with me? Okay. Now, Chris Bohannon sitting right here, black shirt. Beard, which sweet beard, my brother. Sweet beard. So he sent me this saying, I think it was on Thursday. Listen to what this says. It says, he says, he said this. It was a little picture. It said, it ran in my family until it ran into me. Come on, somebody. It ran, it ran in my family until it ran into me. Now, he will tell you that he ran with it for how long? 20, 20 years, he ran with it, okay, give or take. He ran with it, but then who did he run into? He ran into Jesus, okay? So the addiction of alcohol abuse ran in Chris's family until it ran into him. Wait a minute, it ran into the Jesus that is in him, and we just sang about that Jesus in song number two when he says he is a chain breaker. Now, there's people all over, coach, there's people all in here right now that can stand up and testify and said, yeah, it ran in my family until it ran into me. But the ran into me, meaning until it ran into him. Because if it wasn't Jesus in me, it would still be running. Okay? Stuff falls. Stuff will fall. In the name of Jesus. He is a curse breaker. That man right there is what? Six, six years sober now? This year. Th yeah, this year. Yeah. I'm telling you, it's all over the place. All over the place. How many years sober? Somebody tell me. Five. Five. Right there. How many? Somebody. Somebody. Anybody. Don't be scared. Almost a year right there. Uh-huh. And then there's some fresh ones that can say, few days. Hey, here we go. It ran. It ran in my family till it ran into me. 
Church, our past, our family's past, you think you're supposed to pick up the baton and keep carrying it? No, it is not ours to carry. It's a lie from the enemy. We overcome bad habits in the name of Jesus. We take back our family and say, well, what happened to your family? It says, unless the Lord builds a house... I labor in vain. I've been working my tail off and then drinking. Uh, uh, every day I get off work, I buy me a case and I drink on that thing. And then I get off work and I drink on it again. And on Saturday, I don't even care. I just drink on the thing. After church on Sunday, I drink on the thing. All that's in vain. It's just, you're just tearing yourself down. What are, you, what are you doing? What are you showing your kids? I ain't trying to be hard on you. I'm just telling you. There's other things other than drinking that we do. I mean, that's anger. That's, that's, that's all kind of stuff that we can pass down to our kids, and it's not good. I don't want that stuff going to the next generation. We got to stop it. Start walking in generational blessing. Pass down the word. Let's pass some stuff down, all right? Let's pass down the word and the wisdom of God. That's what we want our children. Let's pass down freedom. Hey, we're set free. Jesus broke the chain. See, the chain's on a lot of people's wrists right now. And if you look, it's not locked. It's not locked. The Lord has broke that. You're like, oh, man, let me get these things off of me. Let's pass that down. Let's pass down peace, joy, and hope. How come we can't do that? We can. We can. We can. Let's go to Matthew 19. Let's, I'm going to show you how to fix it. Matthew 19, y'all still got a little more? Still, still, you keep saying yes, I'm going to keep going. I'm just playing. I'll have you out here by 2, 2.30. <laughs> Some of y'all are like, oh, no, man, where we done come? Hey, hey, hey. Hey, feed on this a minute. You're going to need this. Matthew 19, let's start in verse 4. Listen. All Jesus is doing is, 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 is telling us what his daddy said. And he said, his daddy said this back in Genesis 2. In uh, verse 4, Matthew 19, verse 4, he's answering and he, he's talking to these guys. And he says, have you not read that from the beginning uh, God made them both male and female? Do I need to elaborate? <laughs> Yeah, listen, it fits to per ebony and ivory, right? Just like the piano. It fits perfect in perfect harmony. Ain't that that song? Ain't that a song? Okay, right. Male, female, look at your water hose, okay? Quick connects. You, that's the only way it works if there's going to be offspring, okay? God says you're fearfully, wonderfully made. He made you the way he wanted you. Oh, God, you messed up. I'm going to change the blueprint. Don't, be, don't start messing with this blueprint. Right. Amen. 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 All right, here we go. Male and female, you're already equipped, right? Stem one, stem on the apple. All right? So watch. For this reason, verse 5, a man shall leave his daddy and his mama... And be joined with his wife. Now, is, dad, is father and mother, is that two dudes, two girls? No. Be joined to his wife, okay? And the two shall be, don't be sending me a bad letter. I'm reading the word. And listen, okay, we got to address this. If you're measuring something and you want it right, what are you going to use? Okay. If you're going to put something together and you want it put together right, what do you read? Okay, do you know what an instruction manual for our family and for our life is? This word. I'm reading to you from the standard. You can't argue with the ruler. You can't argue with a level. You know what I'm saying? You can't argue with this word. You either believe it or you don't. Okay? So this word says that it's male, female. You leave mom and daddy when you're equipped and ready. And you be joined to your wife to become one. We talked about being one last week. Please go back and listen. Watch that. So then, they're no longer two, but they're one. Watch this. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no man separate, especially yourself. Amen. Okay. So man and woman comes together. Please stay with me. They produce children. Okay. We're talking about a fix for generational curses. 
Man and woman come together. They produce what kind of offspring? We talked about it last week. Godly offspring. Okay? Godly offspring. They're equipped to leave and equipped to join to a wife. Okay? What is the old school word? I'm leaving and I'm cleave. Yeah, yeah. I leave mom and daddy and I cleave to my wife. Or vice versa. You know what I'm saying? Y'all with me? Okay. Man, y'all quiet. Y'all make me nervous when you're quiet. (laughs) Okay, listen to me. The way you leave is the way you're going to cleave. Right there. That's a good note to write down. Because the way you leave is the way that you're going to cleave. Now, if you have left a strong house, you're equipped, you're a do-to-book child, you're a do-to-book young adult, you, are, you, are, you have a foundation in Jesus, and you're being equipped, you will cleave to a young lady like that. That's what it said. That don't try to cleave to something that ain't thinking like you. Okay, how, how crazy it is to leave a foundation and not have a foundation. You know what I'm saying? Okay? So the way you leave is the way you're going to join, the way you're going to cleave. Church, that stops the generational curse right there. That's how you stop it. Okay? Because you're leaving equipped. You're not leaving broken. You're not leaving full of burdens. You're not leaving confused. You're not leaving cursed and joined to other broken, cursed you know, you, 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 you're leaving equipped, you're joining equipped. And guess what? You're equipped. It's a generational blessing passing down. Not, not bringing addiction and, 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 and abuse with you. No, you're leaving equipped. And ch- This is up to mom and daddy. Right here in the house. Listen, what am I saying? Make sure your children leave whole and complete. Don't, don't have them wonder. No. Nah, well, you just go figure it out the best you can. You just go figure it out the best you can. No, 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 no. No, that's not good. That's not good. Man didn't, listen, again, man didn't come up with marriage and family. God did. We, he's the architect. We got to look at his blueprint for a strong house. Quit making changes to the blueprint. Do the book. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. He said, Paul says this, he says, May the God, may God, may God, let me read it. May God himself sanctify you. In other words, set you apart. What? Complete. That's whole. Okay, what is whole? And this, this is going to make a lot of sense to somebody today. And may your whole three parts, you're a three cylinder. Three parts of you, may your whole, what? Spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. You don't want to be walking around like, like, uh, all three of you, like one part of you here, part of you here, and part of you over there. Hey, hey, I mean, how weird is that? No, you want to be walking around whole. What does that mean? What does that mean? It says, it says that you want your body to line up with your spirit and your soul, all three working in one. What does that mean? Well, your spirit, okay, is who you are. When you die, your body goes back in the ground, your spirit goes to be with the Lord who made your spirit. Okay, but the deal is, I want to give my spirit to Jesus. I want his, my spirit to line up with his spirit. Okay, and then in my soul, what is your soul? Your mind, your will, and emotions. Once your spirit is changed, your soul should be changed. Your mind changes. Your will changes. Your emotions line up, right, That to your body. Is your body a house for the Spirit of God in you and a mind and a will and emotion, is it all one or is your body seeing things, wanting to do things that your mind is saying, no! That's what I'm saying. We want, we want our children to leave whole. I hope that's making sense. Okay, we got to start wrapping up. Let's go to 1 Peter 2. 1 Peter 2. I know, I, I, I can tell right now, somebody's going to eat some chicken tenders today. And the question is, is it going to be gravy? Is it going to be barbecue sauce, honey mustard? What is it? Maybe it's going to be some cane sauce. I don't know. but I'm messing y'all up, ain't I? Okay. Are, y- are y'all still with me? All right. We got, we got a few more minutes. I'll get you out of here. Hallelujah. 
High risk area. That's right. Thank you, Damon. When you come in, we, we, we need to know it's a high risk area. Enter at your own risk. <laughs> First Peter 2, look at verse 13. I want to talk about community right quick. Mom and Daddy, don't give up on me yet. Therefore, did I tell you where to go? First Peter 2, verse 13. Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether to the king as supreme or governors, to those who are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers, for the praise of those who do good. For this is the will of God, that by doing good, you may put to silence the ignorance and foolishness of men. Hmm. Now, I know these days and times that are hard, but it says it's the Lord's will for us to obey what he said. Now, I would say, if it's going against the will of God, no. Okay? I'm talking about when, 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 when our stuff, our laws that we put in place that are, that are right, okay, that we should follow, here's what I'm getting at. Are we raising kids? Are we raising kids that are going to school and they're honoring their teachers? Are we sending kids to school that are honoring their coaches? Are they honoring the one, the janitors that are cleaning up the hallways? Or are they looking down on them and talking trash to them? Are they honoring those in authority over them at school? You know, because that just shows you what's going on at the house. Boy, y'all quiet. Are we, listen, are we, are we showing them to honor the good police? <laughs> right? Are we telling them, that, hey, that, that speed limit ain't a suggestion? Well, why are you going over it, mama? <laughs> Is anybody getting, picking up what I'm putting down? Yeah. Are they, are they, here's what I'll say. Are they honorable in general? I was so proud of my son, Shane, today, uh, this week. He, he went over there to a Mexican restaurant in Kilgore, Khaleesi over there, and he, he picked us up some uh, barbacoa and some chicharrones. Come on, somebody. Yes, yes. The Lord, may the Lord bless you. And there's a man's billfold laying in the parking lot. He told me, he said, Daddy, I was tempted because that thing was, had money in it, had credit cards in it, had all this stuff in it. I said, hey, I said, really? I said, what'd you do? He said, I got to get it back to him. I was so proud of him because, you know, that's tempted because, man, he, he's between jobs, right? He, he's going to work this week, but he is broke as a joke. <laughs> so the Lord allowed that to be sitting out there to tempt him. But no, I was proud of him. I said, boy, I'm so proud of you. He, 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 he turned it in, right? He's a, he's a, he's a good boy. But here's the thing. I, I see, I, I see that, that dishonor is just running crazy. I'm telling you, when you can go to the dollar store and they got deodorant and soap locked up, that's bad. <laughs> I mean, you expect that with like some expensive stuff there, you know, when you go to the store, they got it behind. I understand that. But when you start locking up deodorant, I say, how much deodorant? What, a dollar and a half? Like, yeah, I mean, you know, the soap, 99 cents, you got it locked up. Yeah. He said, he said you wouldn't believe the people that just, psh, psh, right? Like, they locking the stuff up. I mean, I was watching the thing the other day. 16-year-old boy riding down the road. He had it on one of my crime shows I watch, and he shoots a man that, that's unloading a, a U-Haul, helping his daughter move into a house. And they ask him, man, why would you shoot him? Because he looked at me wrong. Yeah, he, 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 he was staring at me. That's what he, that's what he, that's what he told him, 16-year-old. And they asked him, he says, well, why, why are you like that? He says, because the street raised me. See, the streets don't make a good daddy. And some of you mamas are being that mama and daddy. Man, I applaud you. You're a hero, man. Let me say this. I'm telling you, all this starts at the house. I'm, I'm going to say this. 
Whoever wants the children the most is going to get them. Whoever wants them the most is going to get them. And the devil wants them more and more and more. I'm telling you, did you see where MTV bought Nickelodeon? Mm-hmm. See, they setting it up. You see how it's set up? They want them. The enemy wants them pretty bad. So let me show you this. I'm going to show you this slide. I'm, I promise you, I'm, I'm almost done. So when you look at the Ten Commandments, you ever notice that the first three are all about God? Like you're to not to have any other gods before God, God Almighty. Like there's no other God. I mean, it's like don't. I mean, you can say, "Hey, I put money before God. I put myself." You could call yourself a little G God, but he's saying, "Don't put in." He says, "Uh-uh, I gotta come first place." You ever read that? You shall make no idols. First of all, you say, "Well, I've got this because I'm thinking of Jesus." Listen, there's not one thing that we can make that can even do him any justice. I thought it was so cool the other day. Uh, one of our twins made a picture of, of, of Jesus, and I think he had no face. Am I saying that right? Yeah, he had no face. Say, why? Say, you can't make Jesus. I said, I love that. No, you, you cannot. Do, and I understand, oh, you got a cross around your neck. Well, I hope that cross is in your heart, too. There ain't nothing wrong with crosses. Cross, cross. But I hope you know what it means. You shall not take the Lord's name in vain. Hey. Right? Okay. Keep the Sabbath day. We know that first four. All right? That's his day. We ain't going to go into all that. Just know Jesus is our rest now. Okay. In the middle, okay, jump to six. You shall not commit murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not covet. All of those. What? That is how we treat man. Okay. First, first four, how we treat God. Okay. The last one there is how we treat man. But which one is right in the middle between God and man? Honoring your mama and your daddy. When you learn how to honor, you got to realize learning how to honor your mama and daddy is setting up how, knowing how to honor God. Listen, mama and daddy like God till the child grows up big enough to realize, hey, there is an almighty God that made me, gives me breath in my lungs. I'm honoring him. Okay? Then it, then it teaches them to honor man as well. And remind, um, reminds him of authority. When the boss says, go sweep the floor, go sweep the floor. Don't look at him and say, I ain't doing that. I'm out of here. Well, you ain't going to get that paycheck then. Listen, we respect authority. Where do we learn it, church? In the house. <sighs> yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Verse, uh, 1 Peter 2, 17. I love this. It says, honor all people. Love the Lord, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the king. That's good right there. That's good. Okay. I'm going to close with this. Honoring all people. Honoring your mama and your daddy. Look at this. Go in three. This is 1 Peter 3 17. Watch this. Here we go. 1 Peter 3 17. No. Seven. I got it all messed up. Sorry, Miss Tina. She tries to keep up with me, and I'm just terrible. 1 Peter 3, verse 7. Look at this. Everybody there? I mess you up too. Husbands, likewise. Dwell with them with understanding, give her an honor to his wife as the weaker vessel, not weaker in anything, strength usually. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And some ladies, they can bench press more than you, but. <laughs> <laughs> and being heirs together in this grace of life that what? Your prayers may not be hindered. Did you see that? There's a way to be married that you can hinder your prayers. Woo. Okay. Notice that word there at the first, dwell. Husbands, dwell. That word dwell means to live. Men, are we showing our children how to dwell?
Are we showing them how to live? Are we showing them how to live? Are we showing our sons how to treat their mama? Are we showing how to treat their wife when they get a wife? They're going to learn that from us. But they can't do that if you ain't never home. Is it possible you can be available just a little bit more? Maybe you don't need that third, fourth car. Proverbs 21, verse 9. Notice it. Better to dwell in the corner of a house than in the house with a contentious woman. <laughs> Let me explain that. If, 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 if you don't want to be in the house, you could, it'd be better to be sitting on the shingles trying to look through your window <laughs> at the TV <laughs> than being there with mama when she's hot. <laughs> Amen? Amen? I'm telling you, I learned this a long time ago, and, and I've gotten better. Like, if you're driving and you, you're in a hurry and there's somebody in the left lane driving slow, usually when you finally go around them, you'll see it's... it's it's, you, it's usually an older man, and, and the Lord said he just don't want to go home. Because <laughs> he... <laughs> Why? Because he... Because <laughs> he's going to get home. That sandpaper hurts on your butt, boy. <laughs> I looked down at my neighbor the other day. That joke was on the roof. I was watching the other day. Man, did Lisa run him out of there? <laughs> <laughs> Ladies, are you teaching your children how to dwell? How to live? Is, is, is that young lady going to know how to treat her husband? Because, see, see it's, it's, again, it's the pattern of starting another strong house that can build a strong community in a strong city. You see it? Teach them how to dwell. Oh, and Lord, please don't let, please, please don't let those recipes go to waste. <laughs> There's some young men coming up that needs to know how to eat. <laughs> we got to know. Our children got to know how to dwell. They got to know how to live. The Lord has blessed us with these children and these grandchildren. You got, you got to fit this to what, what you're going through right now. You may be single, don't have any children. Man, be taking this in. Be taking this in. Because one day, we are held responsible. And men, we're held responsible for our household. Why do you think God said... Where are you, Adam, in the, in the garden? He's like, well, ain't, how come you ain't asking about her? No, yeah, he's, we're responsible. We're responsible how to raise our children as well. If we ever want to change what's going on, it's got to start with the children, right? Because them children are going to grow up and be leaders. Them, them, them children are going to grow up and be taking your blood pressure, be telling, you, be telling you what kind of medicine you're supposed to take, Right? They're going to be doing important things. They're going to be doing stuff that means a whole lot. They may be the one saying, we're going to war or not. You know what I'm saying? So this is how important it is. If you would, bow your heads. Man, we got this little, beautiful little dark gray, white striped little pit bull. Her name is Violet. And man, 
man, she's my friend. And I'm outside on the grill. Grilling some steak or some chicken. Guess what? I throw, I throw her some of the good goods sometimes. She's in the house, man. When Cody and them ain't looking, I'll give her some, some good stuff. Give her some chips, you know. Don't feed her that. She need to eat dog food. I understand. I got a friend sitting in here right now. He used to buy his dog a bacon, egg, and cheese biscuit every morning. Maybe a breakfast on a bun. That's good. Why are you feeding that dog like that? Man, I love that dog. And the Lord said, I felt like the Lord said, man, you know, we feed what we love. Church, if your, if your children, if your friends, if your family, if your husband, your wife is important to you and you love them, feed them. What do you, what do you mean, Brother Scott? Pour into them life. Speak life into them. Pour Jesus into them. Pour all the Jesus you can into them. Feed them. Not the bread of sorrows, but the bread of life. Look at those olive plants that are around your table. Grandparents, look at, look at them little olive plants you get to spend time with. Are you taking that time and pouring into them the bread of life? Can we all say, man, we can do better? We can do better. Say, Lord, lead me, guide me to do better. I want to send that young man out. I want to send that young lady out as strong as possible with a foundation that's mobile, that'll go with her. Wherever they go, then I don't have to worry about them not honoring authority. I don't have to worry about them choosing the wrong spouse. I don't have to worry about them getting tied up in lies and having footholds and addictions in their life. We feed what we love. Maybe you're in here this morning and you're the product of generational curse. I want to tell you right now, and you may not be able to put the drink down. Like you feel like you just, man, it's got you. Maybe it's smoking. Maybe it's pornography. Maybe it's anger. I don't know. You know what, you know what it is. Maybe it's bad tradition. Maybe you got this mindset that does not line up with the word of God. I'm gonna tell you right now, if you're sick of it, the Lord is standing there with his hand out. Give it to him. You say, well, I can't. I feel like I'm chained up. You're not chained up. He has broken that chain. You got to take it off and hand it to him. Can you say today without a shadow of a doubt, Jesus, I'm giving this to you, and I'm not picking it back up. If you're in here and you need help, I want to help you. I, I, I got I got. Tons of people in here. Whatever you struggle with, they've struggled with it, and they've overcome in the name of Jesus. You can talk to them. 
If you st struggle with anxiety and fear and anger, man, I can talk to you. But I'm telling you, you don't have to walk around with this another day. You don't have to bear that iniquity, that lifestyle another day. Father, I thank you for this day. I thank you for how much you love us. And I thank you for the freedom that we have in you. Thank you for setting us free. Thank you for the rescue stories that are in this place. Thank you for chasing these rebels down. Thank you for getting my attention, Lord. Lord, I pray for those right now that could be fatherless. I pray that you would surround them with men and coaches and teachers and, and family members, whoever, to, to pick up that slack. I pray that you would give mama an extra dose of understanding. Lord, you say you're the father to the fatherless. Lord, for those that feel alone, that are solo in here today, I pray that you would, you would take and surround them. Lord, I thank you for this church and how this church surrounds people that are lonely. It says you put the solo in families. You give us a family, our church family. Oh, Lord, I'm so thankful for our church family. Lord, I pray for those that are struggling right now with carrying around a generational curse. I pray today that lie is destroyed in the name of Jesus. The enemy be bound. His tactics be extinguished in Jesus' name. I pray where there was heaviness, now there is praise. Where there was ashes, Lord, now there is beauty. Thank you for loving us, Lord. Lord, I pray right now there would be families in here today that would start eating at the table again. At least once a week. Lord, we give you the praise. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. The church said, Amen. If you would stand, we got one last song. Listen.